The following podcast is a presentation of Project I Radio 24 7 Nergasm. <laughs> No comment! Sir, what about the ending to The Rising? Mother for <laughs> What part of no comment don't you understand? Do you understand this? This interview is over! No comment! The f Brian Keane was also unavailable for comment. Welcome back to The Horror Show, brought to you by Project iRadio. I'm your host, Brian Keene. With me, as <laughs> always, as always, a bridesmaid, but never a bride. <laughs> Dave, meet your host. Well, technically, I guess I've been a bride a couple times. Um, I, I would like to thank my cats for uh, holding their uh, MMA Octagon of Death event at 3 o'clock in the morning on the bed last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah it was delightful. <laughs> Did you let them go on YouTube and watch old videos of Breath <laughs> James White? They've probably seen those because I've watched them, and yeah. there's typically um, I, I I tend to watch like YouTube. Uh, you know, there's usually a cat around. I do watch YouTube sometimes on my TV. I think I was watching some wrath fights on my TV. So yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure they've seen those. And yeah. They got pointers from them. You know, my my oldest son. We've never told this story on the air, but uh, my oldest son, now from the time he was ten until the time he was eighteen, uh, I didn't see him or hear from him because uh, you know there was some stuff going on. Basically, his, his mother absconded with him. But uh, in, in talking to him when, when he tracked me down and made contact with me, um, he had no frame of reference for horror. You know, he, he's a comic book reader, but not a prose reader. Um, the thing that impressed him was that his old man knew Wrath James White because <laughs> he knew Wrath as a fighter. Right. You know, um, so, yeah, I've got that going for me. Okay, well, that's that's a good thing, actually. Yeah. You know what else we've got going for us? Uh, hopefully some ads. Hunter Shea, that's right. Yeah. Uh, this episode is sponsored by Hunter Shea's new novel, They Rise. Jaws was just a seafood appetizer. Hordes of enormous prehistoric ghost sharks are swarming in the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> I didn't read the ad copy until now. Okay. It says ghost sharks. Yeah. It's not a Nicholas Pichon I'm, joke. Okay. I'm already sold. In fact, that's all when you say is ghost sharks. I'm like, yeah, I'm buying this. <laughs> Hordes of enormous prehistoric ghost sharks are swarming in the Bermuda Triangle, devouring everything and everyone in their path. It will take marine biologist Brad Whitley and the entire U.S. Navy to stop them in the bloodiest battle ever seen on the high seas. From the king of cryptids, the maestro of monsters, comes Hunter Shea's latest foray into be beastly horror, They Rise. A sea monster tale on a cocktail of steroids and human growth hormones, They Rise introduces a new, terrifying beast to the monster lexicon. The Eyes of Madness Reviews says, Outrageous, balls to the wall, it made me yearn for 3D glasses and a tub of popcorn, extra butter. If you enjoyed the Montauk Monster or the Dover Demon, you'll dive right into They Rise and just may forget to come up for air. They Rise is available at Amazon and everywhere books are sold. Visit huntershea.com for details. That's hunter, S-H-E-A dot com. And wow, that's some great fucking ad copy. That is. That's excellent. Good I, job. I, I think Hunter <laughs> wrote that himself. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you know, this is what happens when you let writers write the ad copy yeah. by the marketing. Piece. Exactly. Or, you know, Stefano at the network. <laughs> um, he can write. <laughs> and, you, you know, it's it's true. Um, you know, we talk a lot about new writers on this show. Um, if you are a fan of Munch Out Horror, uh, the, the term given to the sort of subgenre typified by James Herbert. Remember the rats? Oh, sure. Course, yeah. Or Guy and Smith. Or, uh, you know, the, the Clicker series by Mark Williams, J.F. Gonzalez, and myself. If you're a fan of stuff like that uh, and you're not reading Hunter Shea, you're doing yourself a disservice. 
Um, and yeah, uh, They Rise, I have not read, but I've read his other books, enjoyed them. They Rise is probably a great place to start. So. I, I, like I said, I heard the word ghost shark, I'm in. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, folks, uh, as you probably know, and I say that because our the last two weeks of shows, uh, have, we've just spiked in listeners. Um, but over the last few weeks, we've been reporting on multiple allegations that former editor and convention organizer R.J. Cavender committed fraud, sexual assault, and covered up another sexual assault, and that HWA officers may, may have ignored or downplayed the proof, leaving their own members to possibly end up as potential victims. Um, coming up later in the show, we have an exclusive interview with editor and writer Kelly Lehman, of course the daughter of the late, great Richard Lehman. Uh, Kelly is going to tell us point blank about the allegations of uh, fraud and the sexual assault, you know, how, how it's affected her personally. Uh, of course, Kelly was one of the first people to come forward about this. Um, perhaps more troubling, she's also going to tell us about how former and current HWA officers may, may have ignored her concerns when she reported them. Uh, however, it's not all bad news, okay? Uh, she's also got some exclusive news on a forthcoming new Richard Lehman book that you are, if you're a Richard Lehman fan, you're going to want to hear. Um, I, I want to preface the show by this. If you're expecting an interview with Kelly that, you know, is basically growing up Lehman and delves into her relationships with Kuntz and Little and her dad and, you know, the future of her dad's books, this is not that interview. No, it's not. Um, and when you hear it, you'll understand why. Yeah. However, um, you know, at the end, I couldn't let her go without asking the, <laughs> right. the one burning question that every layman fan out there has in their mind, and it concerns a writer's tale. Yeah. And I think her answer will please you. Um, so, you know, do stick around for that. Um, I also want to thank uh, author and editor Michael Bailey for sitting in on that interview. Uh, he played your part very well, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so he sat there and said nothing useful. <laughs> No, he said many useful things. Yeah, well, then he wasn't me. Uh, but yeah, we'll get to that all later in the yeah. show. But first, um, the other big... I mean, last week's episode, people really seemed to dig. Yeah. Um, you know, the interview with Damien went well. Uh, the news, of course, you know, we went more in depth. But people really seemed to like Coop's review of Game of Thrones. <laughs> well, it, it was amusing. It's Coop, so... You know what Kelly told me? Well, Kelly told me the only time she listens to the show is when we have Coop on. Well, that makes and, me feel good. Apparently her mom, it's the same way. They only listen if Coop is on. <laughs> uh, uh, so we're, we're going to have to figure out a way to have Coop on more, even though he can't because he's working. I right, guess, yeah. yeah. Um, um, well, you can review more TV shows, although I, I think the review is going to be like pretty much like that one since he watches no TV shows. I have an so. idea. I have an idea. Let me let me run this by you and okay. you tell me what you think. Okay. okay. <clears throat> um, I never watched Full House back in the uh, I, I, or whatever. Like, I, it's one of those shows I know that it existed, but I know nothing about the it. The only thing I knew about it is John Stamos would come on Howard Stern and right. Talk. Yeah. That, yeah. That's all I know. Um, but Netflix keeps recommending Fuller House to me. You know, Net <laughs> Netflix seems to think I so. What they're saying, the what you're saying, is is that Netflix recommendation system is drunk. It may, it may be flawed. <laughs> yeah, because that that seems like an odd thing to recommend to you. It may be flawed. Well, and also, uh, you know, Bleeding Cool, a, a site which uh, we we support, we endorse. Um, my my one big issue with Bleeding Cool is that uh, there's a reporter there, Christine Marie, who insists on reporting on Fuller House nearly every goddamn day. Oh, really? And apparently she doesn't read the comments because people are ready to like, commit suicide. <laughs> over this. So I'm intrigued by Fuller House, having never watched it, having no frame of reference. And uh, what I thought we might do uh, sometime this month or next month before I head out on the road is we'll do a show where you and I and Coop, and I think we have to bring in Lombardo, um, the four of us sit down and watch the pilot episode of Fuller House, uh, sort of like a mystery science theater thing. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll keep up a running commentary. What, what do you think? You think you think the listeners would like that? Well, it's either going to be amazing or it's going to go terribly, terribly wrong, but between Coop and Lombardo, it'll be amazing. So I, I 
Yeah, I think we need to do this. All right, listeners, yeah. if, if you would like that, let us know on Twitter or Facebook. Um, <laughs> let us know, and, and we will make it happen. I think it would be hilarious just to duct tape Coop to a chair and have a Fuller House marathon, but no. the dude's our friend. We can't no, do that No, I think, I think only pretty sure I'm only going to be able to take one episode of that crap. Um, so, well, we'll we will, we will do that. I, if the listeners, I, I'm sorry, it. fans, if, if you people enjoy it, to me, it will be crap. If you enjoy it, that's fine. I, I, I am, yeah. I'm going in blind. I know yeah. nothing about, I, I don't either. I, so. you know, it's, it's not on my radar. Netflix is not recommending that to me. So, um, you know, although on Facebook yesterday, I, you know, they have those ads on the side and I'm always right. amused what they show me because it's like. Yeah, you know, a lot of times you like say I'm, I'm searching for like guitar parts or something. Then I'll get nine million ads for guitars. And that makes sense. Yesterday was a an ad for b- ballet lessons, and I'm like, do you know who you're talking to? Because because you know this, I don't know where that came from. You know what I get ads for? Senior citizen online dating. I get a lot of those too. Yeah, what the but fuck I, is that about? Because I'm old, so. Yeah, but our, yeah. both of our statuses say we're in a relationship. Yeah, oh, I don't actually, think, no, I think mine says I'm single. Oh uh, no, mine, but, mine's you know, mine's relationship. Um, but um, I think, I think, I don't know that they can see that field. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know if advertising can see that field. Folks are swinging. I uh, well, oh, there's there's documentaries about that, that you don't want to watch. Neither of us are, are, are. I almost said neither of us are swingers. Um, <laughs> ne- well, I, us, I no, I'm going to go on record. I'm not a swinger because uh, no. <laughs> you know, I have a funny swinging story, but I would have to get the other person's permission before I could tell it. Right. Um, so we'll. I'll make a footnote here. Uh, I think I think I knew the story you're, you're talking about. I'm making a footnote yeah. here in the show notes. Yes, give permission to yeah. tell a hilarious story. And uh, <laughs> the person who wins the show notes from uh, the project, I <laughs> yeah. page they'll be like, "What does this mean? <laughs> what the fuck is that?" Yeah. Um, no, I'm, uh, we're not senior citizens, so why why does Facebook insist on showing that? I, what I think like at age, what age can you join ARP? Like, is it? 50 I like i know that like i get the things in the mail and i'm like i know i'm not joining this even though phoebe yells at me it's like you get good discounts and i'm like i don't want to be well, this old yet right you know? there there's <laughs> one uh there's one benefit for joining aarp over hwa <laughs> you're getting good discounts yeah really you know? health insurance <laughs> do they have health insurance yes they do do they really yeah yeah oh yeah it's really good apparently it's really good Wait i don't know okay about. now listen to me yeah don't you tease me dave no not i have been without health insurance since my divorce. Right. And it is taking a toll on not only my health, but my bank account. Right. You're telling me that at age 50, which is uh, two, I, two years away from I don't know when you can join ARP. I'm just going to say 50, but I don't know if that's right or not. You can look it up on the internet. I don't know. But yeah, you can get health insurance through them. Really? I don't know what it costs. I know apparently it's pretty good because I know some people, different people I know have it. And uh, but I don't know the specifics. So the list delights me. Yeah, I have to look forward. I have to, <laughs> you certainly look forward to it. I have to go yeah. research this. Uh, let's cut the the show short. Let's go right <laughs> to Kelly's interview. No, we can't do no, that. No, we can't do that. We have, we have things to talk about. Yeah. Like uh, I, I don't know when you want to talk about. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm curious to hear all the terrible things people said about me at World Horror this week. You know, <laughs> actually, people didn't say terrible things about you. I was I was in the bar, uh, deep in conversation with uh, Michael Bailey. And I happened to hear your name mentioned behind me. I turned around. There was a, a whole group of people saying good things about you. Wait, and, the, the, these people the show. saying good things who'd post them on Facebook. So I occasionally get a compliment and not emails from uh, tax people I and, know for and fact, home finance people because that's all I get. <laughs> I know for a fact Rose O'Keefe posted something nice about you on Facebook this week. Oh, that was right. that was on your page. Yeah, I right. saw that. So. So what you're, you're you're demanding they come to your page and post? I just demand you know if you have nice things to say, don't be having a conversation at the bar. Have in front of me. You know, it's oh, just you know, <laughs> no, s- d- send me nice emails instead of. <laughs> people said good things about you at WHC, and it was it was a very intimate WHC. Um, for for new listeners, uh, WHC stands for World Horror Convention. Uh, sometimes stupid people confuse <laughs> it with the HWA. They are two completely separate entities. Um, well, I think the confusion too comes from, and I don't understand how the it, years that HWA has linked up. Yeah, WHC it doesn't happen all the time, no. but they have the Stoker Awards at WHC, so I can see where people that aren't following this would get confused. Right. Yeah. You know what? I, I I'm going to walk back my stupid people joke. Okay. Um, <laughs> you're you're not stupid for thinking that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it, this year they were not connected. Uh, World Horror Convention. It's 
it's not a convention where there's cosplay going on. Um, it's not a convention for fans. Right. Now, fans do show up. Uh, but what it is, in a nutshell, it's, it's ostensibly a trade show for horror writers, publishers, artists, etc. Um, I've been going for 20 years. Uh, this was definitely the most sparsely attended world horror I've ever been to. I think there's a number of factors. I think, first of all, the fact that it was in Provo, which is not easy to get to. Right, yeah, yeah that's... Uh... <laughs> um, and I think the fact that the HWA's quote-unquote Stoker Con right. is taking place sure. two weeks after it's... in the same region, geographic region. We talked about that last year when it was announced. It's we... like, it, these conventions are not cheap to attend. Most writers don't have a lot of money. They're right. going to have to pick one. Right. Yeah, you know, they can't go to both of them. Right. Um, but, you know... What was I mean? There was maybe 120, 140 people. Oh wow, that's small. Yeah, it was yeah. But the awesome thing about it, uh, for the new writers who showed up, and for the fans, because fans do attend, right? Um, they got so much one-on-one intimate time, you know, with myself, Jeff Strand, uh, you know, Kevin J. Anderson, Bailey Hunter, you know, all all the. The guests that were there, Linda Addison. I mean, Linda was the belle of the ball. <laughs> well, she people. is anywhere she goes, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, anyway. But, uh, but um, you know, I'm also jealous because, um, um, spoiling this, but we you did an interview with Bailey Hunter. I did, and uh, I only know her through Facebook. I've always wanted to meet her because she's never met. Her. I, I don't recall ever meeting her. Yeah. So I don't think we've ever been in the same place. I, I love her. She's amazing. She's very funny, very intelligent. So I'd love to meet her. So I was like really jealous you got to interview her. <laughs> well, she's going to be delighted to hear that. Yeah, that's why I said it on the air. <laughs> so, yeah, I, uh, I interviewed uh, Bailey Hunter of Dark Recesses Press, uh, Michael Bailey, right? Um, Kelly Lehman, who of course we'll hear in this episode. Uh, I did a round table with four brand new authors. Um, who are all like have just sold their first stories? I I've already listened to that one, and I want to tell people right now: you're going to want to listen to this. It's really good. Yeah, it's really interesting, and I learned things I did not know. Yeah, so that was cool. Uh, and the one I think I'm most proud of, uh, Jack Ketchum. Right. Um, that was my favorite part of the weekend. Was just oh, I'm sure hanging out with Dallas. Dallas Mayor, of yeah. course. Uh, Jack Ketchum's real name. It's a uh, open thing. Uh, he won't mind me saying that on the air. Uh, you know, I got in. Wednesday night, uh, and then uh, you know I found out Dallas's room was right next to mine. Oh you know, wow! <laughs> I'm sure they did that on purpose. But yeah, just uh, man, it, you know, you go to these cons, and you know, you get to hang out. But yeah, I mean, for for most of the con, Dallas and I, we just you know we had some some nice alone time. You know, we took a walk. Uh, <laughs> we went to a liquor store. This fan, Keith, insisted on picking up our liquor store tab. He had to sign his receipt for him. That was awesome, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it was, uh, you know, I've said before, I, I would have never gotten to where I am without the help of Richard Lehman and Jack Ketchum and, and so many other folks. And, uh, you know, uh, it was just, it was nice to hang out with Dallas and just, fucking shoot the shit and uh we did that all weekend long and you know i managed to capture some of it for the podcast of course uh but there was a lot of stuff that that remained off the mic i think it should yeah well um, <laughs> the other delightful thing was uh you know the the new writers like like steven kosanowski was there um managed to blind pitch a book during the recording of the podcast, actually, the moment the mics were turned off, managed to pitch a book and got to send it to me, even though the place is close to submissions. Uh, Rachel was there, Rachel Autumn Deering. I, I roomed with her and her wife, Jessica. Uh, Rachel had a great weekend. Um, she may have picked up an agent. Uh, she got an invite to do a, a comic book, which is what she's trying to get away from. <laughs> yeah. but, but hey, you know what? It's still money. It's still money, yeah, exactly. But it was just... I had a neat moment. Um, I guess it was Saturday night. There weren't there weren't any party. Are you okay over there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All this talk of Bailey Hunter got you flustered. No, all, all this cold medication crap. Oh, I take. okay. <laughs> um, 
I'm up to 20 pills a day now. Okay. Seriously. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. I take 20 pills a day to stay alive, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ. Plus many injections of various things. And, uh, oh, yeah, my flow nays that I have to take to, to keep my sinuses clear. So what you're saying is more people should be like Hunter Shea <laughs> and, and his new novel, They Rise, and they should buy ads. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, there, there weren't a lot of room parties at World Heart this year. Um, mm. So Saturday night... I realized that I had a fridge full of beer. Um, I had five bottles of bourbon. Oh, good lord! And Dallas still had like three bottles of scotch. Yeah. And I, I said, to, I said to Dallas, I said, let's do a keen catch and party. He says, all right, well, let's do that. So we had a, a, a little room party, and uh, it was a wonderful mix of new writers and veterans and fans, and we're all just hanging out. And you know, I don't want to. Say it was drunken debauchery, you know. Jeff Strand nursed a bottle of spring water all night, and, <laughs> you know. Um, but I just I had a moment where it, I I looked and uh, I kind of looked around the room and I'm like, this is cool. And I realized that Kozanuski and myself in Dallas were sitting in the corner talking, and you know, H.P. Lovecraft mentored many young authors, including Robert Block. Right. Okay. Um, as we talked about when Chet Williamson was on the show, Robert Block mentored many young authors, including Jack Ketchum. Uh, Dallas sent him a fan letter when he was like 14 years old, and Block wrote him back and encouraged him to keep writing. Um, you know, Dallas mentored many young authors, including myself. You know, we've told the story on the air of how he negotiated the contract for The Rising at right. a hotel bar. Um... And, you know, I'm trying to do that. I, I'm trying to mentor young authors, one of which is Stephen Kosanowski. Um, <clears throat> you know, who I, we had him on the show, and I was so impressed with the young man. I'm like, yeah, you know, after the show was over, I'm like, dude, I, I'd like to help you. Um, and it was just, I don't know, man. It, it was like a, an Alan Moore mystical moment in that room. And then, like, five minutes later, Kelly Lehman says to me, she says, so do you want to say hi to dad? Now, <laughs> I have always had this little fantasy in my head that it's kind of like the series finale of Lost. You know how in Lost, <clears throat> they all created this special little afterlife for right. themselves to wait for each other? I have it in my head that there is a hotel convention bar with really good bourbon. <laughs> and that Dick Lehman and Charlie Grant and Graham Joyce and Rick Hodla and Jesus and Tom Pick, really, they're all hanging out there, having a good time, waiting for the rest of us to show up. So when Kelly says, do you want to say hi to Dad? I thought, well, fuck, this is it. <laughs> I've had a heart attack, and I don't know about it. And Kelly realizes it, and she's telling me bye. Yeah. And I may have been into my second bottle of bourbon. <laughs> And, uh, oh, dear. you know, it turns out Kelly's in the process of moving, and she had her dad's ashes in the car. Okay. So uh, she and I and Jeff Strand and Michael Bailey, we get out of the parking garage, and I'm holding my old mentor's ashes in my hand. And I have no words. I have no words. Mm -hmm. um, I took a picture of the box. I put him, put him down on the floor or, you know, the floor of the parking garage, and took a picture, and I texted Coop, Mike Oliveri, Mikey Hike, and I said, uh, Dick says hi. Coop texts me back. You know, what am I looking at? <laughs> is that what I think it is, and where the fuck are you? <laughs> so I don't know what he thought was going on, but it was, uh, it was a good con, man. I I'm glad I went. Um... You know, uh, Kevin J. Anderson and I had a nice long talk. We had some business for next year that's going to catch a lot of people by surprise. And he explained the New Dream Theater plot to me. You know, that new Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It all makes sense now. <laughs> it's, and it, I was right. It's yeah, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Yes. Um, um, so yeah. Unfortunately, I, I wanted... I wanted to grab an interview with Kevin and an interview with Brian Killian while while I was there. And time just got away from me. Right. And, um, I apologize to both of them, but... You know, I'm sure we'll have them eventually. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, your weekend is more, a lot better than mine because my my weekend consisted of uh, buying a television. So, buying a television. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, yeah, my old. Uh, that was traumatic for you. No, it was just a pain in the butt. I mean, you know, because 
it's a 65 inch tv so i was just you know i had to move the old one get the new one put the new one up you know so yeah yeah, yeah. what uh, is buzzing over there uh oh it's my phone What's i'm getting forty nine thousand messages per second probably from doctors um but uh bert was excited because there was a giant new box i uh, we got the bert, tv we should clarify this my, one of my cats cat. well if you listen to the dave and phoebe episode you guys heard bert because he was moving one of his boxes around the room the whole time right. this is what he does i need to give him a job with a warehouse but we get the tv out of the box and within 30 seconds he has dived off the couch into the tv box <laughs> he he was just, like thrilled and I'm, like I don't know that you're going to get out of there, but he somehow managed to leap back up out of the box. So. Have you thrown the box away? Or no, it's still, still there because um, with a TV, this is a little tip for you people. Um, when you get a new television, the best thing to do to see if there's any issues with it is leave it on for twenty the, for 24 hours. That pretty much simulates the first year of usage of a normal television. Really? So if anything's going to show up, because pretty much TVs now, if they're bad, they're bad out of the box. Right. They, they typically don't go bad until like seven years later, like my old one did. You right. Know? Which seven years, you know, it's you know, I got a lot of use out of it. Um, but that's a good way to test them. And then if it's bad, the thing is with it, any store is like they want to screw you as hard as they can. So if you take something back to the store, oh, this is broken. I want to exchange it. Oh, you didn't bring the original packaging. We have to charge you a packaging fee. You know, they're always screwing you around. So I always save the box and all the materials for a couple of weeks just to make sure everything's okay. And then, you know, I'll get rid of it then. Right. Yeah. So that's a. Well, that's I'm a, sure Bert is happy with that. Oh, he's he's in heaven. You know, so. <laughs> but that was, that was my. Uh, Excited yep. that and uh, I yeah I quick we are uh, uh, have some rescue cats at my house um, and I'm not going to tell the whole story because it's just too long and um, we took the kittens to their uh, foster their new foster home now, in Virginia. Did you get sad about that? A little bit, but I knew I couldn't keep them. Yeah. I didn't want to keep them. I have three cats already. That's mm-hmm. enough. Um, so, uh, but I missed the. Because they're kittens, so they're nuts. Right. And I haven't had a kitten in almost twenty years, so I forgot how insane they are. <laughs> like they're crazy. Like they're they're climbing. They have they had we put up this this like giant playpen type thing and for them to hang out in, and they're like climbing up the sides of it, and just they're crazy. Yeah. So uh, the woman that has them now sent us an email that like she she got them home, and she has like a, a room for them, and she let them loose in the room, and she said. They were nuts. They were insane. It's like they're running around, they're climbing the walls. You know, just they're having a great time. Yeah. So uh, they'll be up uh, there. It's Four Paws is the name of the organization. Yeah, I, give them a plug. Yeah, Four Paws is the name of the, of the organization. Um, when we did our David Phoebe show, we talked about that because she she's done animal rescue in the past. And uh, these kittens will be at an adoption fair, probably in the Virginia area because that's where they are right now. Uh, but they'll be at adoption fairs and. Probably about two weeks they'll be old enough to be adopted. There you go. You can adopt one of Dave and Phoebe's kittens. They're named after uh, the the characters on Scandal. So, well, there uh, you go. yeah, the mom is Olivia, and then there's Abby, Quinn, Huck, Fitz, and Melly are the kittens. So cool. <laughs> that was Phoebe's idea. <laughs> so <laughs> That's a lot of names. Yeah, well, it was a lot of kittens. You know uh, what else has a lot of names? What's that? The Shirley Jackson Award. Oh, movies. oh, yes. Yeah, I saw we this. Should, we should talk about that. The nominees for the 2015 Shirley Jackson Awards. For outstanding achievement in the literature of psychological suspense, horror, and the dark fantastic were announced. Um, you have heard us talk about the Shirley Jackson Awards on previous episodes. We've had Paul Tremblay and Jack Herringa on the show, both of whom are involved in the awards. Um, I endorse the Shirley Jackson Awards, even though it has been patiently explained to me that I will never ever win one. Uh, but I, I, I endorse them... Simply because, uh, you know, unlike a lot of other awards in this industry, they are voted upon by a jury of professional writers, editors, critics, and academics. That's, again, um, why I think these are the best awards. Yeah, in, in there's no category. lobbying, yeah. there's no politics, right. there's no stuff in the ballot. Um, this is about as pure of a fucking system as you can get. Unfortunately, they don't recognize pulp horror or extreme horror. Shirley Jackson was not one for writing novels about zombies or giant crabs. <laughs> I think that's a mistake on her part. <laughs> I also noticed there's no podcast category in, on these you know, awards either. I, I think Jack Herringer's exact quote was, if you were the last writer on Earth, we'd give the award to trees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's one of my dearest, oldest I, friends. So, <laughs> But... Uh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I don't. Should we list? Should we read through the entire list? No, I think uh, just people can go online and read the list because it's a yeah. big list. Um, yeah, go to 
on Facebook, type in Shirley Jackson Awards, right. it'll pop up. Um, but you know, there there were some some really cool ones. Um, you know, uh, Gemma Files for novel experimental film. I read that. That was fantastic. I heard that's really good. I've not read it yet. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, let's see what else deserves a, a special mention. The novella category. I was I was really impressed with uh, the Box Jumper by Lisa Minetti. Now Lisa. I've been at this over 20 years, and I've known Lisa about all that time. Right. And you want to talk about... Yeah, I was telling some of the, the youngsters... Youngsters. Youngsters. At, at World Heart, you know, I, I was explaining to them, yeah, you can write every day, and you can do this and that, but the one thing no one ever mentions is patience. You have to be patient. This shit doesn't happen overnight. You know, Lisa has been writing as long as I've been writing. And, you know, she's been patient, and now you're seeing that fucking patience pay off. You know, so good on her. Um, Steve Tem within the Lovecraft Museum. Uh, you know, Simon Spurrier, Nathan Ballingrode, Elizabeth Hand. The, the novella category this year for the Shirley Jackson Awards I thought was particularly well represented. Um, you know... Just the, uh, yeah, like like you said, it, it would take too long. It's to a big long list. All these. I, like I said, yeah, I, I note there was no podcast category. There, there. is no podcast Haranga. category. <laughs> and, and yeah, Haranga, Tremblay, yeah, Livia, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, is Livia still involved? I think I she is. think so. I'm not positive about that, but the other two are definitely involved. And yeah. I will point out that the the edited anthology category. I can I could get a backdoor Shirley Jackson award because oh. uh, seize the night edited by oh Christopher yeah Bolton that's right you're in that is up yeah for the award and I am in seize the night in fact I think I'm listed on the cover you know it'll say oh like, yeah you, Stephen King Clive yes, Barker yes. and others you're on the cover yeah I don't think I'm listed as and others no I think you're on the cover I yeah, think you're right so. So fuck you, Haringa. <laughs> well, if that wins, you're gonna have to change like your cover photo on Facebook to say Shirley Jackson Award winner, yeah. and then send it to Jack. I, you know, they give these away at ReaderCon. I was gonna say it would be funny if if it wins, Chris should let me go up and, and accept the award. <laughs> but uh, the problem is they give them away at ReaderCon, and I, ReaderCon has this thing where you have to apply to like attend. Right. Convention, yeah. You know, and. You know, I'm, I'm out in the middle of this tour this summer. I thought, well, you know, I'll do ReaderCon. Um, and so I sent a thing. I said, hey, I, I would like to attend your convention, and I'll do a reading, and I'll do a panel. You know, it wouldn't fucking get back to me. Now, I know this sounds arrogant, but I'm Brian fucking Key. <laughs> Apparently, though, from what if, I've read, if, that's if, how that convention but, works. But my point yeah. is, if, if I show up for your convention... People will show up. People will pay money right. to come in and get me to sign shit. So yeah. you'll make you'll make money off of me. Oh well, they're lost. Uh, except at ReaderCon, yeah. apparently they they didn't even give me the courtesy of you no know, thank you. We're not right. gonna, you're you're a big old giant trigger warning. And you will create <laughs> yeah. an unsafe space. None of that. They just didn't even respond. <laughs> unsafe space. That's hilarious. So. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Apparently, I would have to bum rush the Shirley Jackson Awards <laughs> to accept on Christopher's behalf. Yes, but Chris, I know you're listening because I just talked to you this morning before Dave and I were recording, and I think you and Haringa and the rest of the Happy Fun Club should figure out a way to make this happen. I agree. That's all I got to say yeah. about that. But yes, um, all joking around aside, uh, you know the Shirley Jackson Awards are important. Um, we endorse them here on this show. And please, please, please take a moment to look at all of the nominees, and uh, you'll find some really good reading. Material. Yeah, and I was gonna say, if there's stuff there, like I don't know what this is, and buy it. Well, and, <laughs> yeah, and read it. You know, I yeah. I think I'm pretty fucking well read. Right. And I I read all across the spectrum. I don't just read bizarro or extreme horror or quiet horror. Um, every year, there's at least one thing on the Shirley Jackson Awards ballot that I was unaware of. Hadn't heard of, hadn't read. So you know, kudos to the the jury who actually select. I know they they do a great job. They do. Yeah. You know who else does a great job? Uh, me. You. <laughs> okay, and you. <laughs> and our our dear friend Nick Mamatas. Oh now, yes. <laughs> now I got in trouble. Um, <laughs> what was it on last week's show with Damien where I said? The place where I get ninety percent of our news is Nick's Facebook. Oh page. yeah, it was either last week or the week before. I don't remember when, but yeah. I remember you saying that. <laughs> he posts on Facebook. 
I, I didn't understand why I was getting 200 friend requests from zombie fiction fans. And then I listened to this week's episode of The Horror Show. <laughs> Fucking king! <laughs> you know? So I'm not telling you folks to go follow Nick this week. Um, what I am telling you is that uh, it's three months until the release of his new novel, I Am Providence. Uh, now, why am I bringing this up? Well, first of all... Uh, See, I don't know how much we can talk about the book without spoiling it. I, I wouldn't say anything because the idea is so genius. Yeah. It's just like if you have the slightest interest in Lovecraft stuff, you need to read this. Comedy and Lovecraft yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it's, yeah. yeah. Or if you like, you know, The Damned Highway by Nick and I. Yeah. Or if you like The Last Weekend, which is available right now. Um, yeah, I Am Providence comes out in, in three months. Okay, now Nick has an escalator clause. Now, for, for new re- new listeners and readers who might not know what that is, an escalator clause says if you sell X amount of copies of the book within a certain time, you get a bonus. Okay, in Nick's case, if 5,000 copies of I Am Providence ship in the first 30 days of release, he gets an extra two grand. Okay. Okay. Nick's a working writer just like the rest of us. That extra two grand. That's a big deal. Yeah. That yeah. could feed his kid. Yeah. You know, um, it's a big fucking Nick deal. Nick lives in the Bay Area, so that could cover a quarter of his rent for the month. Exactly. Yeah. yeah not, you know. You know. Um, now, it's important to point out, I don't believe this escalator clause applies to digital editions, ebook editions. It has to it be has a to be paperback. Paperback. Okay. okay. So, you know, Nick wants an extra $2,000. And, you know, as... One of Nick's friends and supporters, I want him to have an extra two thousand. Absolutely. Um, you know, three months from now, I'll be in the middle of my tour, and I may need to hit Nick, hit Nick up for a loan. Yeah. So I would really like him to have that two thousand dollars <laughs> as well. So if you were planning on buying a paperback, okay, go to Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, Pals.com, any place that will directly ship the book to you. Okay, uh, go on there and pre-order a copy now. You know, if you pre-order it now, 5,000 copies of the book ship in the first 30 days, Nick gets the extra two grand, okay? And as Nick points out, you're actually benefiting yourself by doing this, okay? Um, If, you know, if 5,000 copies of the book are pre-ordered, Amazon and Barnes & Noble are gonna reduce the uh, the sale, sale price. I've seen that happen with pressure. Oh yeah, you know pressure. Uh, I think Amazon at first they were selling the hardcover for twenty four ninety nine. As pre orders for the book increased, they dropped it because they want to stay competitive. Right. They dropped it down to nineteen. I think uh, the other day they had dropped it down to eleven dollars and change for a trade hardcover. That's crazy. Yeah, and but I'm that's still, their algorithm. That's how yeah, it works. And so. I'm still getting paid. Right. The you same, get paid you know? the same. It's yeah. So, yeah, uh, I Am Providence by Nick Mamatas. Go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble or Pals, and, and please, if you can, pre-order a hard copy of the paperback, okay? Um, so, that was all the good news. Do you have any other good news? Uh, no, I, like said... <laughs> are you in a happy little place where you and Coop and me and Lombardo are watching Fuller House? <laughs> I don't know how happy I'm going to be when I'm watching that. To the, get Lombardo drunk before that, do you think? Oh, d- 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 yes. And put, like, two pots of coffee in the coop. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. you and I will just maintain. Yes, exactly. All right, that's what we'll do. All right. Um, so, as we've talked about in the last two shows, uh, we have reported that <coughs> Kelly Lehman alleged that R.J. Cavender sexually assaulted her. Uh, we then had a second victim who will remain anonymous, uh, who came forward, said that R.J. Cavender also sexually assaulted her. Uh, it was also alleged that Cavender helped to cover up a sexual assault that was committed by another writer. Uh, it was alleged by approximately a dozen authors that Cavender defrauded them out of money for editorial services that were never delivered. It was also alleged that the HWA, under President Lisa Morton, despite numerous reports and grievances from their various members, did nothing to resolve the situation in a timely manner. Okay, Uh, Cavender quit the HWA after these reports surfaced and offered no further comment when asked by this show and others. All right, 
Now we've got you up to speed on the last right. few shows. All right. <laughs> uh, as we reported last week, uh, the two writer conventions that Cavender organized, the Stanley Writers Retreat and the Winchester Mystery House Retreat, all of the guests he had lined up canceled. Chuck Palahniuk, you know, everybody else. They canceled on him. Right. All right. So that's where we stand. All right. Now, this week, author and editor Simon... I don't know how you pronounce Simon's last name. D-E-W-A-R. Is it Dewar or Dewar? I have no idea. You know what? I'm going to pronounce it <coughs> Dewar, Dewar, but he is a doer. Okay? Well, that's, this is true. Because <laughs> Simon has been vocal and yeah. at the forefront of this scandal since it broke. Uh, he, he's got mad respect and props for me. And, oh, me too, yeah. You know, he lives far away across the ocean, but Simon, if you ever get over to this side of the pond, Dave and I... Yeah, you're going to be on the though. show, absolutely. Yeah. Or if we uh, ever get over there. <laughs> well, um, in that case, people would have to do like Hunter Shea. Yes. And his new novel, They Rise. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, earlier this week, Simon contacted the Stanley Hotel, where the writer's retreat is held, the Winchester Mystery House, where that writer's retreat is held, and Indiegogo, where, as of this recording, R.J. Cavender still has an active fundraising campaign. Simon contacted all three of them, presented all of the information to them, outlined all the allegations, provided supporting documentation, screenshots, scans, etc. Okay? Uh, basically, Simon is requesting that Indiegogo shut down Cavender's donation campaign. Um, I wholeheartedly encourage our listeners to do the same thing. Okay? Uh, I shut down an Indiegogo campaign once. A uh, guy was frauding people. And what I found is that it, Indiegogo didn't just take my word for it. They needed to hear from multiple people. Okay, so if you have a moment, take the time. Go to Indiegogo, search for Stanley Hotel Writers Retreat. You'll find it. Um, and go through Indiegogo's process. They make it really simple. There's a form right there on the website that you can fill out. It goes to them. Uh, let's shut the motherfucker down. Um, it's also worth noting, uh, as of this week, several individuals have now contacted the FBI uh, regarding Cavender's yeah, fraud. Yeah, I saw this, yeah. Um, despite all that, Cavender is apparently sticking to his guns. Um, while we were at World Horror. Of course. In the bar. <laughs> uh, everybody's phone, it, it was so funny. Like, every phone in the fucking bar starts blowing up at once, right. including mine. Well, why? Because it turned out Cavender had finally emerged and issued a statement. Um, now, he made this statement in an email to attendees of both the Stanley Writers Retreat and the Winch Winchester Mystery House Retreat. He also posted this statement on Facebook and on his Indiegogo campaign. Um, and it says, quote, Despite recent online rumors to the contrary, the Winchester Mystery House Writers Retreat 2016 as, and end quote, he also substituted the Stanley, you know, writer's right. retreat, um, is still very much taking place. There has been a major change and dropout with our guest of honor lineup, something that has always been subject to change. But that doesn't mean that the hotel or myself are willing to cancel this event. We hope you'll still join us in August. If you've canceled your reservations at the hotel, Call back, and they'll be glad to have you re-register. Okay, now I'm going to stop right there. I've helped organize, what, 17 conventions at, at this least, point? At least, yeah. All right. The reason he's worried about people canceling their reservations, he has to pay more money. Right. Okay? The more reservations you have for your event, the less money you owe the hotel. Okay? Mm -hmm. So... He says if you've canceled your reservations at the hotel, call back and re-register. I'm telling you right now, if you don't want to support or endorse this guy, don't call back and re-register. And if yeah. you haven't canceled yet, do so. Yeah. Okay? He goes on to say, quote, <clears throat> But know that these guest of honor cancellations were something wholly unexpected and out of my control. <laughs> you hmm. think? You think? And registration for the event is non-refundable as stated in the campaign information when you register. Though you can transfer registration to a different event, to a different guest for registration, or I'd be glad to trade in for editing services of equal value. Well, well there's a deal. Yeah, let's take a look at the value of those editing <laughs> yes, services. Yes. Um, 
Is there a tire fire nearby? Because we could go over and throw our money into that, and it would be way better than, you know, you almost, that was pretty good. I made Brian just about spit his alcohol all oh. over the all over the table Jeez. here. Oh, I yeah. got bourbon in my fucking yeah. nose. <laughs> no, I, well, it's Pennsylvania, so it's, it's, it's tire fire season, which is, is every day. But, uh, you know, uh, people, seriously, this guy has been accused for however long this has been well, going at on. at this point, it's yeah. not accusations. Well, I mean, you and I have seen the proof. Sure, absolutely, yeah. but... We'll just say the word accused anyway right. um, of taking people's money for editing services and not performing the services. Right. Why would you give him more money to do this? Well, that yeah. or or you could transfer your registration to a different guest. Why would you do that to anyone you like? Well, the, I was just going to say there's you know people that you don't like like uh, you know Nicholas Passione that oh, uh, we could send him oh, to one of the writers retreat. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. See. That's brilliant. He would have no way to get there, unfortunately. But you know what? Yeah. I'll tell you right now, and this is on the record, I would pay for his travel. Ah, there you just go. send him as a guest yeah. to, to R.J. Cavender's writer's retreat. <laughs> and it's just Pichon <laughs> and, and Cavender Ar- sitting around yeah. for a fucking weekend. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be the most delightful thing ever. <laughs> Unfortunately, we would not be there to witness it. But <laughs> No, I think I'd have to pay for my own travel. <laughs> I don't want to be anywhere near this guy, seriously. I, yeah. I don't either. I, I think I'd rather be near Passion than, than Cavender at this point. Um, well, I'll, I'll yeah. tell you a little something here before we get to Kelly's interview. Now, Michael Bailey and I sat in a room with her. Um, we were both, Michael and I were both physically shaking by the end of that interview. I night. believe it. Uh, I, you, yeah. can, you can imagine the, yeah. the physical toll it had on Kelly. Oh, absolutely. Telling her yeah. story. But yeah, Michael and I were just, I mean, we were... I don't know that I'd want to be in a room with R.J. Cavender either. No, I, 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 even before I listened to that interview, it, I don't want to be in a room. I definitely now. There's yeah. no way. But oh. sending Passion is like <laughs> some sort of biological weapon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, anyway, the, the point is, is don't give this guy any of your money. No. He just don't. Don't support this guy. Don't register his hotels. And like Brian said, go on Indiegogo and... Let's try to get this campaign de- taken down. Why hasn't been taken down already? I'm not sure. Well, they're slow to act. I well, I understand you know. that, but uh, as someone pointed out, it's like, well, geez, you want to scam people? This is a way to do it. Right. I'm like, yeah, they might need to have some better controls on this I, kind of stuff. I would think now yeah. that the FBI has been contacted, things might move. I, more honestly, quickly. well, I'll tell you what. If if he wasn't in trouble before, he is now. Right. Yeah. Although I've got a buddy in the FBI that that told me, you know, if if you want to get them to move fast, you got to link it to terrorism. Well, I wouldn't do that because no, there's you nothing. Can't, no, you can't. Oh, no, don't. For the yeah. three stupid people out there, right. I'm not advocating yeah. you report him as we a are terrorist. not because he's not. He's not. No, he's an idiot and a criminal and and many other horrible words. But allegedly, allegedly, yes. Well, yeah. Anyway, got to protect um, Jess and yeah. Stuff oh no, no. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I suppose <laughs> if we must. <laughs> Uh, Cavender then closes out his email. Oh, yes, there's more. This is the best part. Quote, any rumors you've read online are just that, rumors. Uh Uh-huh. What you've read about me isn't true. And that was when I personally hit the fucking roof. Right. Uh, Rumors not true? Uh Uh-huh. And RJ, here's a little thing. I know you're listening to the fucking show. I know for a fact you're listening to the show. Um... Rumors, not true. We've heard from almost a dozen separate victims who were defrauded by your editorial service. We've seen the documentation. Dave and I have it. My attorney has it. Yeah. You know, fucking bring it, Skippy. Yeah. You know, um, we've heard from four separate, separate from each other individual witnesses who have corroborated Kelly Lehman's claim against you. Uh, We've heard from half a dozen witnesses, including the convention organizer, who have corroborated that you uh, may have covered up or downplayed another sexual assault. You know what? Now we're going to hear from Kelly herself. But before we do, one more time, this episode is sponsored by Hunter Shea's new novel, They Rise. Uh, It's available at Amazon and everywhere books are sold. Visit huntershea.com for details. That's hunter, S-H-E-A.com. Um... We're going to go to Kelly. Uh, as I said, before we do, I just I just want to set the stage. Um, Dave was not with me. Uh, it took a lot for Kelly to come forward with this and talk about this. Um, and for her own comfort and peace of mind, 
And for my mine as well, and for the networks, I didn't just want it to be me and her. Um, so I asked Michael Bailey to sit in with us and kind of fill Dave's role. And, you know, again, uh, on behalf of Kelly and myself, I can't thank him enough for doing that. It, you know, it, it wasn't easy for Kelly to tell this story. It wasn't easy for Michael to sit there and listen to it. Uh, kudos to both of them for stepping up. So let's go to that now, and then uh, Dave and I will be back on the flip side. All right, uh, listeners at home, joining me right now is Kelly Lehman, daughter of the legendary Richard Lehman, who you've heard quite a bit about on this show and who I'm sure most of you have read. Uh, and if you hadn't read him, then when you heard about him on this show, you, you went out and read him. Uh, also here in the room with us is Michael Bailey. Uh, depending on when this airs, you'll either hear an upcoming interview with him or you'll already have heard it. I imagine it, it, you will hear it at a, a, a later date. Uh, of course, Michael is no stranger to listeners of the show. He's one of our favorite sponsors. Um, Michael is here in the room to act as a witness. Uh, as you've heard in the last two episodes, uh, there have been allegations about R.J. Cavender. Um, Kelly was one of the folks involved in that story, and she is here today to exclusively tell us her story. Kelly, uh, on behalf of myself, Dave, the network, we really appreciate you sitting down with us. Oh, I'm glad to be here. And also the P.S. Gifford situation. And the P.S. Okay. Um, yeah. that, that, that one actually concerns me more than what R.J. did to me. All right. But R.J. covered up large portions of what happened at right. KillerCon. For new listeners, uh, just let me quickly recap. And, and Kelly, uh, if, if I get something way wrong here, feel free to jump in. Michael, I'll, you I'll too. I'll interject. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, as we've been talking about in the two previous shows, uh, it was alleged that R.J. Cavender uh, bilked a number of people for his editorial services uh, while with the HWA and using HWA's communication channels to do so. It was also alleged by a number of individuals. Uh, Kelly has come forward, and as we reported, there's a another individual who will remain anonymous, uh, that R.J. Cavender had sexually assaulted them. There was then the third allegation uh, that another male writer, who Kelly has named here on the show as P.S. Gifford. Yes, as, as has the victim online. Right. Yes, she has named him. Right. Uh, raped or attempted rape? It, it, was, it was molestation and attempted rape. I right. pulled up her stockings and her panties when we found her in the bathroom okay. after he dropped her. Uh, that Mr. Gifford did this and that R.J. Cavender covered it up. Uh, now we've reported on... Uh, it happened at a convention that, that Rath James White had organized. We've, we've reported uh, Rath's story. You know, which which confirms it that it was indeed covered up by Cavender. Yeah, because I I, I was complaining a lot about KillerCon for about a year, and finally uh, it got back to Rath, and Rath contacted me. And he said, "What's going on?" And I told him, and he was completely horrified. Right. He had no idea. Well, let's let's start at the beginning. Um, now, what convention did your personal incident with Cavender occur? That was the Salt Lake City World Horror combined with the Stokers in 2012. 2012. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's uh, the HWA's Bram Stoker Award weekend combined with the World Horror Convention. Yes. All right. Um, now, as happens is these conventions, I mean, right now, Michael's got a glass of bourbon. I've got a glass of bourbon. And Kelly's, so do I. And Kelly's got a glass of bourbon. <laughs> yes, we all do. <laughs> right. You know, people are hanging out. We're imbibing. Um, and I take it the evening started in that manner. Uh, a little bit. I, I, I was actually not really drinking that much that night. I was not drunk at all, but it was the dead dog party on Sunday night. And, uh, oddly enough, a female friend of mine, she was the one who said, oh God, can somebody just go do something about RJ? And so then Boyd and I ended up carrying RJ out of the dead dog party to Boyd's car. And this female friend, she she feels so awful about it four years later that, you know, she, now, she like she threw me under the bus. Now Boyd, she had no idea. Boyd is Boyd Harris, who was RJ's former business partner? Uh, I think they ran the Conte. I don't, I don't know. I, I barely knew RJ prior to, you know, when I carried him out of the dead dog party. Okay, so he's he's 
well inebriated. Oh, yeah, gravity was not his friend. Okay. And, and Boyd and I are not big people, and he's a big person. So the, and we, the, we, we, we struggled to carry him, and we dropped him a few times. The two of you are carrying him to his car, dropping him. Yeah, okay, did. and and that's that's when the assault took place. Yeah, he 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 kept putting his hand up my shirt and then down the front of my jeans and the back of my jeans and like getting up and down in there, you know. And you told him to stop. Oh yeah, I swatted his hand away and you know kind of half dropped him in the process because you know I needed both hands to prop him up. Okay, um, and just a reminder to listeners, uh, as we said on last week's show. When uh, Damien Angelica Walters was a guest, I do have two independent witnesses, independent witnesses of each other, both anonymous, who stepped forward and confirmed for me that they witnessed this exactly as Kelly is describing it now. I have a feeling I probably know which people those are. <laughs> <laughs> How? I'm not trying to get on Maury Povich here. On oh, you, no, not at all. I mean... What does that what does that do to you? Do you just do you laugh it off and try to give him the benefit of the doubt? Well, or? kind of a little bit. You know, it was one of those things where I was I was just glad to be done with it. And of course, when I, I was I was tasked with uh, pushing him into the uh, passenger seat while Boyd paid the valet, and I really dropped him on the floor <laughs> in the driveway. <laughs> so at, at least there's that. Now this is after uh, all the. Well, well, yeah, this is at, yeah because we we. We kept carrying him, you know. So the next day, did he acknowledge it? <laughs> well, uh, you know, it was one of those things where I was just kind of like, oh, people do. Can I curse? Yo, P- people. Coop is a co-host. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I mean, I've listened to this before. Of course I know better. Yeah, I mean, you know, people do fucked up shit when they're drunk, you know. And so the thing is, a couple of days later, he did send me a private message, and he said that uh, he doesn't remember any of it. He's very sorry, and... Uh, Several people reported it back to him, and each version that he heard was worse than the one before. And I, so I was like, okay, well, you know, dude fucked up a little bit. Right, let me stop you there, because I think this is an important point to make. Um, you, you didn't approach him about it. Other people called him on this shit. Yeah, I was basically going to let it go, okay. you know. Right. Because and, that, that, and, that's just kind of how I am. I and, don't. I don't want trouble. And other people said, "Dude, what the fuck?" And then he reached out to you. Yes. Okay, so it was an omission on his part. Yes. All right. Um. Now, because you know HWA was involved with this event, did you reach out to anyone at World Horror or anyone within HWA? Well, tepid- at that point. Oh. Oh. Uh. Well, I did tell people. I, well, God, yeah. I mean, I, I made no secret about it. It was not. I, I basically let it go. It was not until a few months later, when the Killer Con thing happened, that I really started to get extremely vocal when he covered up what happened there. All right. Well, let's let's talk about that now. I wanna I wanna remind you. I know that the victim. And I hate to use the term victim. I'd rather use the term survivor. But. Uh, the woman in question, I know she's been named elsewhere in public. I have chosen not to name her here on the air unless unless she wants to, you know. Yeah, well make that also I've I've been asked to tell the story several times this weekend and even though she has come very, very forward, I still won't say her name right. unless the people say her name first. Right. So let's let's try to remember not to use her name. Dave, I know you're listening at home. Beep her name out if we fuck up. And and Michael, you can sit over there and go beep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. beep, 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 beep. There you go. You got it. Do you need more mu- more knob creep, Mike? <laughs> okay. All right. So, a few months after what happened to you, y'all are a killer con. Yeah. Um. Now, RJ is there. What? First of all, what's it like for you to encounter him there? You know, I was basically cool with it. You know, okay. because I, I, like I said, I chalked it up to people do dumb shit when they're fucked up. Okay. You know, so it, it was it was reasonably cool. Now. We've had multiple, multiple witnesses step forward uh, at a party at KillerCon. It was, a, it was basically the dead dog party. The dead it was dog Sunday party. night, yeah. Okay, it, you know, it's alleged that uh, author P.S. Gifford uh, was drinking with the victim. Well, he, he, he was trying to come on to her, and she kept trying to get away from him a little bit for a while. Now, I can't speak to certain events that happened earlier because, <laughs> oddly enough, 
I, I was out all night at dinner and the Penn and Teller show with Paul Wilson. Oh, nice. So, uh, so we, 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 we were out having a good time just doing our own thing. And we got back to the hotel around 10.30 or 11 or so. And uh, Polly, Polly had an early flight, so he, he was only going to go up to the con suite for about five minutes. I, I, just a quick aside. Isn't it cute that she calls out Paul Wilson, Polly? Paulie. I think that's adorable. <laughs> I, 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 I've, I've known him since I was eight years old. <laughs> He's Polly. <laughs> Uncle Polly. Uncle Polly. But, but yeah, and so, so I was like, well, you know, we've been at the show and dinner all night. I'm going to go grab a daiquiri and some jello shots at the Fat Tuesday at the Stratosphere food court, and then I'm going to go up to the con suite and get my party on. All right. So, which didn't quite happen that way. Uh, so we got up to, so I got up to the con suite and right as Polly was leaving and I almost said her name. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. (laughs) And she was fine. She, she was drunk, but she, but she was like a good level of buzz. She was, she was fine. And we should point out there's nothing wrong with being drunk either. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what we do sometimes at these things. (laughs) Yeah. And, but she, but she, I, I thought she was fine. And so, you know, people were singing along. We were all plugging our iPods into the speaker system and playing music. And people were singing along and putting on shows and everything. And we turned around and Gifford had his hand up her skirt at right on the couch, right in the middle of the con suite. In front of witnesses. Oh, yeah. Okay. And several of us saw it. And I, I remember I turned around and I was like, oh, shit, this is not cool. Now, at this point, what I've heard from other witnesses and what I've heard from the victim is at this point, she had blacked out. She doesn't remember it. She, she, was, she, was, she was basically non-responsive. Yeah, yes. I, I have heard from other witnesses. And again, for legal reasons for the network, I stress al- the word allegations. I know, Rath, you're going to make fun of me later in private, and that's <laughs> all right. Um, but, you know. It has been suggested to me by witnesses that she may have, in fact, been roofied. Uh, yes, well, that that's something that I, I dealt with when I was, uh, when, once I had her square, I, I've spent the night with her, and I spent, you know, the whole evening with her at, when she was sick. And the thing is, is that I texted a friend, and who, who knows a lot about drinking and stuff, right. and I, I asked her, how do you know if somebody's been roofied? And she knew that I was at KillerCon because I'd been texting with her the day before. And she said, what the fuck is happening? And I was like, just tell me, just tell me stuff. Tell me, tell me anything. Right. And, and she was just like, make her vomit, make her vomit. And I was like, okay, she's done a little bit of that, but not a lot. Well, now, was this, this conversation with your friend took place after the incident? Uh, or- like, like, like. 20 minutes after the okay, incident. Okay, because... because it, was while, it was while I was still taking care of because in, the friend. Because in front of witnesses, Gifford had your friend, you know, he, he was feeling her up. And then what I've heard from, from multiple sources, including the victim, and, and again, the victim has no memory of this. She's going by what she's been told by others. Uh, at one point, Gifford dragged her into the bathroom. Yep. Locked the door. Mm-hmm. And they were in there. I've had witnesses tell me 15 minutes. I've had witnesses tell me 20 minutes. I I actually don't think it was that long because okay. the thing is, is that when I saw him with his hand up her skirt, somebody distracted me while we were all kind of getting concerned. And another woman, she went up to RJ and said, hey, this isn't cool. And he said, oh, well, it looks like she's enjoying herself. She was passed out. All right. I want to pause right there. So R.J. Cavender's response. Now, he's he's working for the convention. It, technically, he was a committee member. All right. Yes. And his response, when you went up and said, hey, we're concerned about this situation, his response was, it looks like she's enjoying herself. It was some. It was something along those lines. It looks like she's Not having fun. Not an exact fun. quote. It, but it looks like she's having fun. It looks like she's enjoying herself. It was something along those he lines. He dismissed it. Yes, yeah, and and you know our friend she she tried to alert him, and we all turned our backs for a couple of seconds. I mean it was probably not even two minutes, and then she was gone. 
I'm you sorry. Can. Hold on, Michael. I, I want you to get in on this because I see you stewing over there. Yeah, yeah. I was I was just gonna say you can't be enjoying yourself if you're unconscious. Yeah, I mean, I mean, she 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 was like only one percent there. Like she could she could like just turn her head a little bit. I mean, she was gone. But she, but also she, she went from buzzed to gone so quickly. That's why we kind of questioned whether or not she had been roofied. So, eventually he emerges from the bathroom. Yes. Well, at, well, after we all noticed that she had gone missing, we knew she hadn't gotten up and walked away because she was not, she was not walking. Right. <laughs> you know, there was no way that was going to happen, and so. We all started going, well, well, where'd she go? Where'd she go? And then somebody said, he took her into the bathroom. And then we started trying to get into the bathroom. Now, when he emerges, does he say anything? I mean, what's his demeanor? He, he snuck out. Somebody said, oh, we just saw him leave. We just saw him leave the bathroom. And so then we were like, well, where's she? And so then we finally got the bathroom door open. And so he he left the bathroom and then closed the door behind him. Once he realized that she was not going to be any fun because she was passed out, he dropped her on the bathroom floor and skedaddled. Okay. And I I, I, I pulled up her stockings and her panties. So they were down. You can confirm they were down. Yes. Okay. I need I need to take a drink. Let let's let's all do that. <laughs> Here's how. <sighs> So, you're caring for her. Yes. Um, well, well, uh, well, I mean, also, we had, we. oh, th thank God she actually kept her room keys inside the little slip that they put them in, because she couldn't articulate which room she was in. We wanted to get her back to her room. And none of the guys, the wonderful guys who were actually helpful, wanted to touch her purse. And I was like, okay, give me that fucking purse. You, and I went through her purse, and I found her room key, and so we were able to... Do, get her out. Do you feel comfortable crediting out loud the guys who were helpful? I you would, don't have to. I'm not trying to put I, you on the spot. I, I totally would, but I always I always mangle the guy's last name. Okay. Fair but enough. But his name was something like Scott Magner. I got, I, I, I've got it in my phone. I don't know him. I, I, I have him in my phone right. for texting because we, we've t we talked about it because, because he wanted to know that she was okay the next day. Well, shout out to you, Scott. Yeah. However you pronounce your last name. Scott Manger or Magner or something like that. So did anyone then go back to R.J. Cavender and say, hey, this is what has occurred. This is what we found out. Scott, I'm mangling your last name. Can we Did. just call him Scott Mangala? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> yes. Scott, so, uh, well, I mean, it, it was kind of a, a, so, I mean, once we sort of, you know, like got everything together and got her up to the room, we, we, we tried to like carry her. And then he's such a big guy that he was just like, I'm just going to throw her over my shoulder and carry her. And so then I, I manned the, elevator doors and everything and got everything open so it would be easier for him. Right. And then I made a toilet pillow for her because she was throwing up. And you, you put, like, the pillowcase under one side of the arm of the pillow. Right. Of the, of the toilet seat and then the other side. And so then that way I knew she wouldn't, like, bob into the toilet and drown while I was dealing with other stuff. Right. But Scott went and tried to, well, he tried to find... Gifford to kick his ass and then he went up to RJ finally and he used the word rapist a lot and RJ didn't want to hear any of that and dismissed it so Cavender on the committee of KillerCon and yeah. Wrath wasn't available and again I want to stress you know if anybody out there is, is trying to hold Wrath James White culpable in this he should not be yeah you're a fucking idiot okay we're going to pause right now. Some folks are coming in. Uh, can you folks give us like 15 more minutes? Unless you got a potty? Yeah, come on in. Just just be quiet and potty. Yeah, you can go potty. <laughs> we all need to go potty. <laughs> Again, I should be pointing out, we're recording this at, at World Horror 2016. Which, which has been a very, very fun time. It has. And I'm sharing a room with Rachel Autumn Deering and Jessica Deering. And Jessica has to go potty, so she's coming in. To go potty. I, I had to go potty as soon as I got in the room, too. So <laughs> Jessica, do you want to take the remote mic in there with you? Or? Do you really want to listen that bad? No. <laughs> so, 
All right. So yeah, again, yeah, you know, we we can't hold Wrath culpable in any of this Not because at all. you know the, the never as Kelly as Kelly is confirming here, and as other witnesses witnesses have stepped forward and collaborated, R. J. Cavender covered it up. Wrath had no knowledge. He, he of this. downplayed it. He made it sound like, from what I gathered from Wrath, when Wrath and I finally talked about it almost a year later. It sounded like uh, R.J. made it sound like a drunken hookup, not something way more serious than it almost was. So, days pass, time passes. Is anyone in HWA made aware of this? Uh, after the uh, after the Gifford thing, I, I told people. I, I made no secret about any of this. I mean, I didn't do it publicly, but privately I texted people. I told people who were in positions to act. I want to clarify it. People who were in positions of power in the Horror Writers Association, you told them. Yes, and, and also when when I would attend local events and I would see that Gifford was working the HWA table, I would contact certain people and say, why is he still being trusted? I told you what happened. Why Why is he still, why are you embracing him? Why is he working this? You should not be letting this happen. And what was their response? Uh, dodgy stuff, no answer. What do you, I'm not trying to press you. Yeah. I, what I, do you mean by dodgy stuff? I, I, I honestly don't quite remember, but it was one of those things where it was just like, it was a non-answer, you know? It was just like, oh, well, you know. But there was never any official response, never... No, I mean, like, uh, and especially when KillerCon 2013 rolled around, which was would have been a year later, I said to the, some of the same people, like, why, why is he going? And they said, oh, we're going to keep an eye on him, we're going to keep an eye on him. So, these HWA officials at the time, are, they, are some of them still in power today? Yes. So, they had knowledge of this, and yet they continued to support... His Stanley Writers Retreat, the other writers retreats. He was still. Oh well. Oh well. Oh, oh for RJ, yes, yeah. But uh, but my main concern was Gifford. All right, Gifford, yes. But um, because, because Gifford would work our local events in Los Angeles. Oh really? Oh yes, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, now see, this is a whole aspect of the story we were unaware of. Oh, I forgot to tell you that at the bar. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, please let's rewind a little bit. So Gifford was involved in the HWA's local LA chapter. Yes. Okay. Um, so the HWA officials are aware that of, so, 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 of, that, some were, that yes. this had occurred with Gifford. Some were, yes. And the ones that were aware were openly allowing him to still participate in events. Yes. Where, God forbid, this could have happened again. Yeah, well, I mean, I doubt it would have happened, you know, on the campus of USC during the day. Okay, that's, th that's th what I'm trying to clarify. Th thank, thank God, at least, you know, there were no nighttime events for the LA Times Festival of Books. So it's not like he was at conventions manning a table. It was daylight, the, the, public the, the, places. The, yeah, so at least there's that. All right, and they were also aware of Cavender's culpability in this. Yes. Okay, again, you don't have to answer anything you don't want to. Were they aware of what had happened to you? Yes. And they're still in power today. Yes. I've never made any secret about this. I like I tried to do so much. I was screaming behind the scenes, but yet tiptoeing publicly, you know, and it was this weird like dance. How many years is that, Michael? That's that's, that's I think if I'm doing my math right, that's four years. You, you held up four fingers a couple of minutes yeah. ago. Yeah. Four, I, I wasn't sure if he wanted four fingers of Knob Creek. I'm down to one finger. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I drank the last. We got a whole other bottle over we, there. We, we, we need Linda Addison to do her trick she, again she yeah, 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 yeah where she it, 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 it was very sensual the way she yeah, did yeah. it michael <laughs> bailey is tonguing my bottle of knob creek right now ladies and gentlemen dave you don't know yeah, what you're missing not being here addison. this is some pretty special stuff Talk to you by linda addison <laughs> you know there's something that your mentors tom Ottolioni and paul wilson and doug winter never taught you they did not they taught me about vermouth and about the perfect martini. Of oh, course they did. Yeah, and oh, and maybe did. Ma maybe gimlets. Yeah, gimlets. <laughs> All right. So, Kelly, what what can people take home from this? I mean, first of all, let's let's talk about the HWA. What? How how do you feel about that? Do you feel betrayed? I mean, well, you're I mean, you're your father. 
When he was alive, he was president of that organization. Well, only for about a month. For about a month. But you and you and I know what he had planned. I mean, he genuinely felt it in his well, heart that he could fix shit. Yeah, well, and, I mean, I have very mixed feelings about the HWA. Like, I love it and I hate it at the same time because, I mean, I, I, I was there when they were counting the ballots for the first, very first Stoker Awards. Think about at, that. At, at, at Dean's house, you know. At Dean Coombs' house. Yeah, I, I, was, I was doing, like, needlepoint with Jurda, you know, and so... You know, I've got nothing but affection for the HWA. I mean, like, we, we didn't even send the, his stoker with the uh, movers. Your this, dad's stoker award? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's in my car. Yeah. Along with the Charlie Award from Alan Beats. <laughs> 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 I packed those very, very carefully in one box, and that's in my car right now. But at the same time, knowing, I mean, you're right. You, you have a unique history with HWA. I mean, as a kid, you were there from the beginning when, yes, when I was. Dean and your dad and Lansdale and everybody else were doing this. And ben, um, Bentley Little was around when they were counting the ballots too. <laughs> he made a rare, rare public yes, appearance. A rare public appearance by Bentley Little. <laughs> you know, you, you've got to feel betrayed by the current administration. Well, I mean, it, it's tough because they've been, you know, they have not been very kind to our family. Uh, it took almost a decade for either my mother or I to even see the layman award that they present every year. And mom and I, it, maybe we're both not there, but one of us is there or both of us. Right. And like, you mean when you say there, you mean at the Stoker award? Yeah. Okay. So, so like, like why does nobody ever acknowledge it? And just like, like, Oh, you know, Hey, take a look at this, you know, because that would be nice right. to have the recipient say, oh, hey, but they never acknowledge us when, I mean, to Jeff Strand's credit, he, he, he always acknowledges us. Oh yeah. Jeff does. A, Jeff is one of the, one of the, the few really good things about the HWA. Yes, he is. <laughs> um, I, this episode will air next week. I, I believe that'll be right around the time that Jeff is emceeing. No, no, it'll, it, no, it's two weeks. Two weeks? It's okay. two weeks, yeah, so yeah. don't say anything. But he'll be he'll be doing a live feed, and everybody tune into that because it's always entertaining. Um, I guess my other question for you, you know, <clears throat> I'm always going to think of you as a little girl. Uh, and that's fucking normal. I think you know that. Obviously, you're not a little girl anymore. You're a woman. Um, but I'm there, not a girl, not yet a woman. <laughs> like that's a crappy ass Britney Spears song. <laughs> Dave, pull that sound bite. We're using that at the end of the year's show. Oh God. Um, and we're gonna have Coop sing along with it in stereo. That would be uh, awesome. <laughs> you know, we've got a lot of young women coming in the genre. We've met a lot of them this weekend. Well, yeah. Well, one especially has really made an impact on a lot of us, and she's very cool. And Who's she, that? Uh, uh, oh, God. Megan Reed. Megan Reed? Yes. Yes. Yeah. She, she has been very awesome, and she made an I, – I, I bumped into her at the bar around the corner on, so, on Thursday afternoon, and then I overheard her saying to the bartender, oh, I'm with the writing conference next door. And it turns out she's from Syracuse, which is where – Kind yeah. of close to where we're moving to. Right. So, you know, you're you're in the unique position. Hold on, I'm trying to. Th I, I don't want to misspeak. You've grown up in this genre. I mean, when you were a baby, you're around Kuntz and Bentley Little and and Gary Bradner and and all these people. <laughs> you know, when when you're a, a young adult. You're, you're fucking hanging out with me and Coop and Mike and Mikey. <laughs> yeah. I mean, looking for goats in the pool. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, you know, you're a woman now. For Megan and for other, you know, young women coming in this industry, what what would you tell them? I mean, obviously, you don't want them to be scared off. No, never. But, well, and it's funny. Uh, another woman in the genre that I'm pretty close to. She she always talks about how weird it is that, you know, during the day you have these wonderful conversations with these guys in the genre, you know, about books, movies, TV, pop culture, whatever. And then at night, you know, you're in the con suite and suddenly they've got their arm up against the wall and they're kind of, you know, trying to make time with you, you know. Right. And, and that's like once the sun goes down at some of these con suite parties – that's the way it goes. Right. So. so, I mean, 
I mean, I, I, Look, I I'm, a, I'm a middle-aged guy and I, I, I don't, I mean, yeah, sure. People hit on me and you know, then Mary just laughs and said, isn't that cute? I never um, <laughs> you, you, Michael, you have never hit on me. I've never hit on you. Not once. Not yet. But neither the, have the I. The night is young. <laughs> I have had your knob. You, you have oh, my, you have oh, my oh, knob oh, right now. Well, but, technically so have I now. <laughs> well, but I mean, what, I, you know, what can, I mean, what do you do to get around that? I mean, I don't know. I mean, like I, I've been really lucky. Like I, I've had nothing happen to me other than the weird RJ situation in Salt Lake in 2012. Do we just need to tell guys quit being fucking dickheads? I mean, it can't be that simple, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> Brian I, Keene says to quit being assholes. <laughs> it's that simple. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe we, you know, just need to carry mallets. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I think it's important to stress that, you know, yes, this happens, but it's not par for the course. Um, yeah, it shouldn't be judged. You know, we, we should not be judged by these random things that happen. Right. And and by the time the show airs, there should be an announcement forthcoming uh, from Christopher Golden and some other folks. Uh, if not, I'm alluding to it now. But there 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 is a plan in place. Oh. Um. You guys remember the Guardian Angels? You know, the guys who would wear yes, the berets? Yeah, the, yeah. yeah there, there's a, a plan. Curtis, in, Curtis Wheela. <laughs> there's a plan in place, and it, it's not, it's really not a case of, oh, we men folk are coming in to protect the women. It, it's not that at all. But there's a plan in place of responsible people who have been vetted, who aren't predators, that, you know, here are the conventions we're going to be at. And if you are there and you are in a situation or you are uncomfortable, you can come find us and we will handle this shit. Well, and also, uh, the, this will probably air just right before the Stokers, but I, I have reached out to the to someone in the Stoker committee that, you know, if anything happens, please call me. And I've given my cell phone number to some people because also, even though I, I'm not a, I'm not an EMT like Coop is, right. but I do have training and, you know, I, I, my BS is in biology, you know, right. I, I've, I've been through EMT training and all that stuff. Right. I said, if anything happens, I don't care if it's, you know, alcohol intoxication, whatever, an assault, just call me, text right. me because I will have my phone on me and I will be there and I, I won't ask any questions. Right. Well, Kelly, I, I, don't think I can say it enough. Thank you. And uh, I'm not being facetious. Thank you for having the courage to sit here and talk about this in the I'm open. I'm glad to do it. Um, seriously, I, I think it will help a lot of people out there. I hope so. Um, and, you know, look, my my audience, I have an obligation to them. They're going to holler at me if I don't at least try to get some little exclusive layman news tidbit out of it. <laughs> Anything you can tell us about your dad's work coming up? Well, well, well. now that we're going to be living on the East Coast full time, uh, who knows? You, maybe mom and I will come down and well, do something. <laughs> well, hey, we would love that. I mean, you know, you know, we'll have we'll have Coop, we'll have Dave, we'll have you guys down. And M mom will have to make one of her special like peep martini drinks. That'll work. But you know, I I, I will drink whatever you give me. But you, Michael, do you see how deftly she sidestepped it? She's not going to give us any news. No news. Nothing. No. No, no new books. Uh, <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm going to ask it, and you don't have to answer it, but you know, I will my, answer audience, anything. my audience will holler at me. Will we ever see A Writer's Tale back in print? A Writer's Tale will be at some point with Deadline Press because we're loyal to them, and it's just a matter of me actually having time to sit down and go through the stuff and get it sorted out. There you go, folks. Exclusive. <laughs> but it now, will be with Deadline Press. Now... You have heard an entire generation of horror writers, not just myself. You've heard, but there's Brian. there's new material, yeah. So there's there's new stuff that yeah. I'm going to add to it. <laughs> I mean, you you've heard Brian Smith, J.F. Gonzalez, Coop, myself, many of us rave about how influential this book was on us. Well, and I know many of you have been trying to get it on eBay, and you don't want to pay eight hundred dollars. <laughs> As Kelly just said, there will be a future edition in the future with might, new might take material. A while. <laughs> now that and that was all material. That your your mom had told me you, that your dad had been writing new stuff. Yeah, and yeah. There there are new chapters and stuff, but it's one of those things where I need to. I've been living out of a suitcase for the past four years, basically. Right. 
So I didn't have a desk and it was very hard to work. And so I like, once I have a, an office to set up and like do stuff, I will get clicking. Well, there we go, folks. I, that's, that's a fucking great note to end this interview on. <laughs> right now, the internet just blew the fuck up. Yeah. Well, um, well now, now everybody's going to sell their older writer's tales <laughs> waiting for the new one. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I know how this works. <laughs> uh, now, you know, through the miracle of time travel, uh, we are recording this on a Saturday night. This will air on a Thursday night. Um I am sure earlier in the show, Dave and I will be talking about the latest missive from R.J. Cavender. Oh, goody. Uh, which just hit the internet in which he denies multiple, multiple witnesses <laughs> and denies any wrongdoing and says the Stanley Writers Retreat is still a go. Good for him. Um, so you can rewind the show back to me and Dave and possibly Coop's commentary for if you, if you want to rehash of that. But, Kelly, thank you once again. Well, that should be very interesting to listen to because we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> anything, anything you want to plug? No, no, no. No I, I, no, I don't need to do the Fred Norris thing. All right. I don't need to do the plugs. Right. Michael, <laughs> throw a plug in for Cairo Mad 3. Uh, you just did. I'll throw in the plug. If you're planning on going to Stanley or Winchester, get out of it. <laughs> There you go. If you're planning on going to Stanley or Win Stanley or Winchester, get out of it. You, you know, while you're here, dude. It's going to be a, a party with RJ. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, and we know what kind of party that goes. <laughs> yeah. do, do you want Do you want to comment on this while you're here? Because I know you and I didn't touch on it in in our one on one interview. I I'm not in a position right now where I can't comment right. on it. But, but just if you're going to the Stanley Writers Retreat or the Winchester Mystery House Retreat, get yeah. the fuck out. Well, yeah. everybody's already backed out pretty much. If the, the 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 hotels are being really nice about it. Winchester, they'll let you cancel in a heartbeat. Stanley is being awesome about it. Um, no one's going to be there. Um, everybody's out. All well, right. yeah, as, as long as you cancel within like 48 hours, you're pretty much okay. Yeah, so. and you're going to lose your money that, that went to those campaigns. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the Indiegogo stuff. Yeah. I was just thinking about hotel reservations. Well, you're you're going to lose your money, but as as I've said on previous episodes, we endorse things by our participation in them. You know, is is what you paid in that campaign really worth it you know so all right dave coop possibly i'm not sure who's in the studio this week this time travel <laughs> thing gets me all fucked up max i know max is there so we're throwing it back to you all right dave then we're back yep. um so there's a lot of stuff to take away from that yeah uh one thing from that interview that surprised me and that I think needs to be outlined in a big yellow fucking <laughs> highlighter is, uh, you know, Kelly's allegation that some current HWA officers were aware of these allegations much longer than we previously thought and may have allowed this fucker to possibly defraud more of their members. Um, you know, current... Current people in charge of the organization allowed that to happen. Now, you can forget everything else we've said on this show about, you know, past things HWA has done. Right. But this is right fucking now. You can't come to me and say, oh, well, that was a previous administration. You can, that's bullshit. You're calling them out. Okay. This is your organization right fucking now. Yeah. Okay. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with that? Well, I'm not, but well, no, I'm also not, not in. I'm asking yeah. the fucking people yeah. out there. We <laughs> endorse things by our participation. That's board. right. Yeah. I can't stress it enough. Uh, something else I, I want to talk about now with Kelly's interview. Um, on the show, we had not named P.S. Gifford. As right. The other author yeah. who had allegedly committed sexual assault. Now, the reason for that was because we wanted to contact him first and give him a chance to give us a quote. Um, however, he has not returned emails. Uh, it's been, what, three weeks now? Yes. I haven't heard back from him. You know, I'm going to have to assume that he has no comment. Uh, so, you know, Kelly named him in that interview. Uh, we did not. Uh, and. You know, I, I've seen his name elsewhere. Uh, in fact, the victim herself had named him. Yes. In a, 
a semi-private Facebook post. Um, I'm I'm okay with you know him allegedly being named. Yeah, because it's for legal reasons. Yeah. I want to point out you and I did not do it. Right. Um, and you know I will say uh, you know if if he does have a comment, reach uh, out. Exactly. You know, and, and we're happy to run it. Speaking of running, RJ. <laughs> You should run. <laughs> I know you're listening to the show. And uh, that's my advice to you is run. Run away. Okay? We joked about Pashone earlier, but, you know, here's a little fact. You're worse than Nicholas Pashone because Pashone can, in fact, claim that he has a mental illness. The only thing you can claim is that you are human scum. Right. Okay? So if you want to go online and post everything you've heard about me is untrue, these rumors are just that, rumors... That's not going to magically fucking change things, pal. Okay? I'm here to tell you you're done. You're done. Yeah. Okay? And if you think you can slink under a rock, just know that I'll be there, and Dave will be there, and Coop will be there, and we will have fucking flashlights shining <laughs> a goddamn light on you. You will not get a moment's peace. Don't break the table. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And something else, RJ, because I've seen others in this industry do it. You know, I've been here for a long time, okay? Everyone has that move where they go away for five years, and then they come back, all right. and all is forgotten. Yeah, all this, is forgiven. this won't be forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> if you think that you're going to come back and all be forgotten and forgiven, I'm going to be there with a fucking bullhorn to remind everybody of what you've done. So run. Mm -hmm. Get out. Leave the genre. Leave these people alone. And don't come back. Uh... That's my advice to you, and if you don't want to heed this very well-intentioned advice, then Dave and I are very happy to make you our new pet project, and, and <laughs> Coop as well. Um, you know, uh, that, that, we'll keep reporting on yeah, this story till it goes away. That's so. all. I, that's all I got for you, <laughs> yeah. Dave. You know, um, uh, that's all I've got in general, Dave. You got anything else? Uh, I, I can't think of anything at right. the moment. So, Well, one more time, this episode is sponsored by Hunter Shea's new novel, They Rise. Jaws was just a seafood appetizer. Hordes of enormous prehistoric ghost sharks are swarming in the Bermuda Triangle, devouring everything and everyone in their path. It will take marine biologist Brad Whitley and the entire U.S. Navy to stop them in the bloodiest battle ever seen on the high seas. From the king of the cryptids, the maestro of monsters, comes Hunter Shea's latest foray into beastly horror, They Rise. That was, that was pretty that was, close to Chet. That was now, good, right? yes, that was good. A sea monster tale on a cocktail of steroids and human growth hormones, They Rise introduces a new terrifying beast to the monster lexicon. If you enjoyed the Montauk Monster and the Dover Demon, you'll dive right into They Rise and just may forget to come up for air. They Rise is available at Amazon and everywhere books are sold. Visit www.huntershea.com for details. That's Hunter, S-H-E-A. Thank you, Hunter, for sponsoring this week's show. Yeah, thank you. And uh, will uh, Hunter be at Scares and Cares Hunter this year? will be a guest of honor at Scares and Cares That reminds year. me, we talked a little last week about the Jaws showing at Scares and Cares, and you said you'd have more information this week. Is that true or not? I do have more information. Unfortunately, I'm I'm not yet allowed to announce. Okay. i just um, curious. There, here's the problem, okay? with We announced that uh, we're going to be showing Jaws in the swimming pool. Right, which is So genius. you bring your floaties yeah. and you sit in the pool and yeah. you watch Jaws. Um, however, the swimming pool has a maxim, maximum occupancy. Right. Okay? So we've come up with some counter-programming so that folks will choose one or the other. And I know how much you love Jaws. I know how much you love sharks. I think you may choose <coughs> choose this other option. Okay. Um, however, I can't yet announce what that other option is. Okay. Okay. So, well, as soon as I can, believe me, I've been chomping at the bit to announce this. Okay. So, Fair um, enough. But, yeah. So, thanks to Hunter. Thanks to Scares That Care. That's Please right. support them. You know, you don't have to go to the convention to support the this Scares That Care charity. This is true. You can go to their website and support them at any time with a financial donation. And, you know, speaking of supporting people and buying books, let's not forget about Nick Mamatas's I Am Providence. That's right. I have already ordered my copy. Yeah, so I pre-ordered my paperback. Yeah. Um, you should do the same. And, hey, while you're there, maybe pick up uh, The Complex by Brian Keaton <laughs> yeah. if you haven't done so yet. <laughs> I don't know if you heard of that guy or not. Yeah. <laughs> New writer. <laughs> Next week, Dave. 
Yeah. One on one with Jack Ketchum. Oh, is that um, we're gonna do that next week? Okay. I think it's one of the best interviews we've had on the show. It's intimate. He talks about some stuff he's never talked about with anyone else. Uh, you will want to tune in and hear this one, folks. And in the meantime, if there's something you want us to talk about, hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, or our website. Uh, the Horror Show is available on iTunes, Andrew, iTunes? iTunes, it's a new service. iTunes, <laughs> Andrewed, <laughs> Rokai, Sitcher. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be doing this. Okay. <laughs> iTunes, Android, Roku, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and all other platforms via Project iRadio. Visit them online at projectiradio.com, and please check out their patron page. Uh, your support of the patrons supports shows like this one and Three Guys with Beards and Kelly Owens' Buttercup of Doom. Or you can advertise on the horror show. And to do that, send an email to Dave at meteornotes at gmail.com. Or yeah. even better, you can send it to the horror show with Brian Keene at outlook.com. And right. I will forward it to Dave. Yeah. And I will watch. I will be out there watching, making sure he takes care of you. Just like I'm watching you, R.J. Cavender. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next week, I hope there's good news. Hey, uh, Captain America: Civil War opens this weekend, so yes, it does. Maybe we can talk about a movie next week. Maybe we can do that. <laughs> I, if, I don't know if I can manage to get out of the house and away from legal documents. <laughs> <laughs> take your twenty pills with you. Dave. Uh, I take my twenty pills every day because it helps me to stay alive. You know, right now. Coop's taking 20 pills because he's heard our plan to force him to watch Fuller House. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't take 20 pills in an hour. <laughs> See you next week, folks. Bye.